food. That's especially in colonial days, because apples will keep for a long time in their natural state, but the, if they're dry, they'll keep a whole lot longer. And there was always danger of running out of food. So everybody had an apple orchard in the colonial days. In fact, in Virginia in the in 1680s or something, anyone with a hundred or more acres of land was required by law to plant an orchard. Well, all these apples that were dried had to be pared, and that was no small job. And you've heard of quilting bees, they had apple bees, where friends, neighbors would gather and spend the apples in the evening just paring apples. They had mountains to pair. They wanted a quicker way to do it. So the first uh, invention of an apple pair I'm aware of was in uh, 1796, something like that, by a 13-year-old boy who later uh, invented the cotton gin. Eli Whitney's first invention was a cotton, was an apple pair at the age of 13. Probably the first thing he did, and others or others working on it, was to impale an apple on a fork that they could rotate. This is the first time I've done this since November, so I'm going to make a few mistakes. <laughs> that they could rotate and hold a paring knife against it. Now this didn't work very well. I can pair an apple quicker this way than without it. But anybody who's handy with a paring knife would be circled around it. Because the blade needs a guide to keep it in the right place. Well, the technique they needed was already in use in a tool that was in common use at the time, the carpenter's plane. Now, I don't think many apples were paired with a carpenter's plane, but it did provide the technique. So they used that technique and made a paring head that had the blade and had the guide, and they would work that over the apple if they paired it. And that worked pretty well, but it has to be held in exactly the right place, the high point of the apple. And when they were in a hurry because they had so many apples to do, that wasn't always easy. So they attached the paring head to an arm, the paring arm. So it was always in the right place. Doesn't that do, do a nice job? Then in colonial days, they would go to the local tinsmith, and he'd make them up something like this. If they could push down through the apple, it would take the core out, and cut it and slice it. You can buy something like that now, it's flat, it works real well. The first apple pears were homemade, no two alike. And then graduate, then finally uh, manufacturers began to make them. Some of them were mounted on what they called a straddle board that they sat on. <coughs> and uh, then in the mid 1850s, cast iron ones began to appear. Now these were not only more durable, because they were iron, but they were faster, they were geared. And the paring arm was mounted on a turntable that took it around the apple as it was paired. Just like that. Well, now this one, when the uh, paring arm goes halfway around, the apple pairs. But you had to continue cracking to finish the cycle. That meant half of the effort was being wasted, half the time was wasted. And but they had so many apples to pair, they didn't want to waste any time. So they tried some other techniques. Now this one, now it's pairing when the apple when the apple's paired or the arm is halfway around it, the arm lifts off, quickly comes back, a little quicker. This one, this is a straddle board, you would sit on this. Now it's pairing, when it finishes, snaps back, ready for the next one. Th these uh, apple pears are wonderful examples of men's uh, inventiveness and ingenuity, trying to find a quicker way to do it. And they were endless kinds of these things. Now this one, now it's pairing, when it, the arm's halfway around, the apple's paired, the arm lifts off, gets out of the way. You would take on, off the apple, put on another one, continue cranking the same direction and pair the other one on the way back. Well, a lot of companies were making these. A lot of people were buying them, but a lot of companies were making them, so it was a lot of competition. So they had to improve them to stay ahead. Well, this basic one does a nice job. You put the apple on, turn the crank and pair. Then, the, then you have to take the apple off by hand. 
well, it's juicy, your hands will get sticky. If you have a lot to do, it can be a real mess. So they made an improvement called the push-off. You see this arm coming around, gets behind the apple. And push it <laughs> some of them, some of them didn't have a crank. They had a lever that you work back and forth. A lot of these had names. This was the Lightning, patented in 1863. And it worked for a while. But you had to know when to stop. Well, after a while, you get something you can use for a darning egg. Of course, it's juicy and socks will get sticky, but when you finish mending socks, you can still leave them. Yeah. Well, they made improvements to the Lightning, and in 1884, they patented the new Lightning. Very similar, but it had a vertical lever, and they added a push-off. This is one of my favorites. Watch real close. I paired seven apples in five, five, five apples in seven seconds with that. Sears Roebuck sold these in, 18, in 1908 for 63 cents. I've been offered a dollar 63 for that. Can I eat that apple? Uh, in the 1800s, a lot of women made their livings with the paring knives. So when these mechanical devices began to appear, they were concerned about it. So in the 1880s, a man named Scott in Newark, New Jersey, invented a, a peach pear. And when he demonstrated his pear at a cannery, 200 women took the paring knives and chased him out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> this is a peach pear. It has a certain, the, uh, there are prongs that grab the pit of a peach and a circular blade that rotates and takes it around the feet. And it does a nice job. This is a complex device. There are uh, eight gears on that. Right? Now, most of these are antiques and some are scarce. But this is, although it's a complex one, it's fairly common. There's always some of these on eBay. There, there's, there's usually a hundred or more uh, pairs. A lot of them will be new on eBay. In fact, there's even the Jersey Jerry Labor of is even on eBay. The best of its kind was made in Reading, Pennsylvania. They made a whole lineup. Every year they introduced a new one. Can I eat an apple? I'm going to give you all some slices. Of them. And they, they kept improving them, and this was the latest patent was 1878. This is the most popular hand crank apple pear of all time. Just like that. There is a replica of this being made now. It is a good one, made from the original pattern. Another one that's still being made is the lathe type. This is a new one, a modern one. It's called lathe because of the big screw. Look at that pairing. There was a lady in New York State paired an apple with one continuous pairing, a hundred and twenty-five. 